Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Brian, I had a brain fart last week. Mm Mm-hmm. Big time. I I forgot the name of the Bader-Meinhof effect. Right. Because somebody bought something and was seeing it everywhere, and he's like, oh, they're infiltrating my brain. No, no, it's the Bader-Meinhof effect, which we've talked about several times on the show, which is also known as the frequency illusion. I believe we even had a show called the Batter-Meinhof. Exactly, yes. the title. No, (laughs) we've covered it quite quite extensively in the past, which is why I was very embarrassed about my brain fart, but uh, yeah. Not definitely, but for new listeners, it is an illusion in which a word, a name, or other thing has recently come into one's attention, suddenly seems to appear with improbable frequency shortly afterwards, which generally manifests when people buy a new car, and then they see that car (laughs) everywhere. Everywhere, yes. (laughs) But it also ties into web advertising, which we've also kind of beat to death with, which your phone's not listening to you. It's not. And no, we'll talk about this in greater detail in security because I've got some fun experiments that I've been doing here at the house. I'm interested in your definition of fun. <laughs> well, yes, it bared fruit. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, I've got a little follow up on the uh, Area 51 deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy that started it has come out on TV in Nevada saying, dude, 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 it was a joke. It was a joke. He's worried the FBI is going to show up at his house. Yeah. So. You know what I would do if I pissed off the entire U.S. military? I'd say it was a joke, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> absolutely sorry bro sorry, sorry bros bro. yeah and uh you were confused about the naruto naruto run yes whatever, whatever you that pronounce is that uh i don't know if you've watched much anime but it is a, a running style where you put your arms and your hands behind you to reduce drag and you basically put your head down and run oh. and i think you have to scream a lot too okay well i'm sure yeah. that'll work against bullets and yes <laughs> exactly Missiles. <laughs> Might work against a cartoon, but not so well against bullets. I will stab <laughs> you with my bullets. Mm, okay. Well, see, okay, it wasn't a typo then. It was just something I have no no awareness of. Correct. All right. That's why we're that's why we're following up on it. Just mm-hmm. to just to get it out there so we don't have the emails. Although since we got no emails or tweets about it, I'm guessing nobody else knew what it was either. <laughs> and it turns out Facebook is doing a big backpedal what? on Libra. Yeah, that whole <laughs> regulation thing. Yeah, imagine that. Ima- yeah. D- imagine that you backpedal a bit when, well, again, much like the Area Fifty One guy, when you pissed <laughs> off the entire government. <laughs> One does tend to back. Oh, Libra was just a joke, you guys. If we yeah, narrow yeah. to run around your finances, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do a Naratu run around your tax laws. (laughs) Oh, regulators can't catch me. I'm going too fast. (laughs) Yeah, so they're going to have to kind of reimagine what Libra is going to be because of, oh, what is that? Regulation. Yes. Mm, Interesting. Yes. When Uh you do uh, threaten the entire foundation, financial foundation of the world, people do get a tad upset. Exactly. It's like, okay, guys. Yeah, you're a bulletin board. Stick to that. Leave the money to us. <laughs> An unmoderated one at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, remember, guys, we still have the bullets. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how Facebook is going to shuck and jive on this one. But they're, uh, they kind of had to go home with their tail between their legs. Yep. In the news. Uh, AI in the news AI. a lot this week. <laughs> Still just neural networks and machine learning, but hey, you do whatever you want to do. So an AI has solved the Rubik's Cube in one second. All right. Deep Cube A, as the algorithm was called. <laughs> Is it from Canada? Deep Cube A? <laughs> eh? <laughs> Completed the 3D logic puzzle, which has been taxing humans since this was invented in 1974. I have never bothered to solve the Rubik's Cube. It was a, it was up there with a pet rock for me. I never got one. Well, no, I did get one. I got one as like a Christmas present from like Santa Claus or something. Never mm-hmm. bothered to solve it. Did you ever do it? I've solved it a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, just when I was, you know, a kid and before I found alcohol. Yeah. Uh, I bought one when I lived in Chicago just because I'm like, ah, eh, maybe I'll just get it and sit on the couch to play with it, you know, to fidget around with it. And, uh, yeah, threw it away. 
Didn't even bother <laughs> taking it to a garage sale. I'm like, this thing sucks. <laughs> Threw nice. it away. So, yeah, no time for that. But Well, uh, the uh, report author, Professor Pierre Baldi, said it learned it on its own, and the researchers noted that its strategy was very different from the way humans would tackle the puzzle, although they don't really explain how in this article. Because um, they don't best, understand how. Yeah, so. I guess. It's all black box. Well, if it's just a black box, it's pretty easy to solve. Oh, uh, wait. But, the Ruby's uh, Cube was colored. The AI is the black box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, how do they how do they not know that it's the way the human would solve it if they don't understand how it solved the puzzle? That exactly. makes no sense. So humans are able to typically solve the puzzle quickly. It takes them about 50 moves when people do it. The AI managed to do it in an average of 28 moves, significantly better than humans. Uh, it, this algorithm is not the first or the fastest non-human to solve the puzzle, however. That honor goes to a system devised at, the, at MIT dubbed the Min2 phase algorithm. They really need some... PR people working. They got any marketing over there, man. Yeah, they really <laughs> they do. Really do. So that uh, that solved the puzzle three times faster, but that did not use a neural network. That was just a, I don't know, it was just programmed to solve the puzzle. So it, yeah, they just trained yeah. it to that's, solve that's the puzzle. That's called cheating. <laughs> well, that's just called how programming used to be. That's why this is a brave new world, Brian. With oh, AI. right, yes, yes, right. It's like now we just give it a Rubik's cube and say, make yeah, all the colors it. on the same side. Yes. What if? What if the actual? Here's what the AI does. It does what all the cheaters did back in the day. It just pops all the bricks off and pops all the bricks back on and say, <laughs> fixed, done. Yeah, I was so tempted to do that once. I believe I just wanted to hit it with a hammer and. Cheat. Yeah, I, I, trust me, everybody I know back in junior high did it exactly the same way. They'd come back into class. Some people would go so far as to remove the stickers and put them back on. And were, Why does the smell of glue? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Elmers did that solution. Yeah, Elmer to AI. That's, the, that's what that's they right. did. And in continuing AI news, a team from Carnegie Mellon and Facebook used a combination of AI techniques to outbet and outbluff human players in a game of six-player no-limit Texas Hold'em. Each of the humans involved had previously won more than a million dollars at the poker table, which includes a bunch of people that I don't know, and I'm sure other people, well, I'm sure somebody's going to yell at us and say, how do you not follow the World Series of Poker? <laughs> because I have alcohol and a wife. Um, <clears throat> yes. So this new AI called Pluribus, played 5,000 hands against the poker players and consistently won more than its opponents. In another test involving 13 players and 10,000 hands, the bot again emerged victorious. This is uh, now Facebook has decided that this AI is so dangerous, it could wreck the entire online poker industry, so they are not releasing its code into the wild. They're using it by themselves in the back room. <laughs> Yes. Guarantee. I guarantee you somebody is making a lot of money on some online, uh, uh, you know, uh, servers on on boats in the middle of the ocean poker companies right now. Yeah, so. seriously. Some of these new engineers came in. He's like, that's all I get for options. Come on. You know, and this is this is how they get their revenge. Well, yes. if I can't get options, at least I'm going to go make some money on poker. Yeah. So it looks like uh, the uh, the neural networks are kind of getting there. We can now consistently uh, computers can now consistently win at chess and uh, they've basically destroyed poker. Right. But soon here's the here's the upside. Elon Musk is going to put that right in your brain because they say they're ready for brain surgery on humans from their new company, Neuralink, which uh it only started in 2017, which seems pretty fast to go from seed round to brain surgery. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they poached all the uh, main people in the field to start with. So it's a bit of a running start. Of course, of course. They said, I mean, yeah. and, and they started with $150 million in the bank, which is, yeah. you know, not a, exactly chump change. And a big fuck off flamethrower. <laughs> no, that was the boring company. Well, I'm sure they got one. I'm sure they did, too. <laughs> that's, that's just what that's what Musk does when he starts a new company. He goes, here's a flamethrower. Here's one hundred and fifty million dollars. Have at it. Have at it. <laughs> well, they need the flamethrower to dispose of the mice that didn't actually work right in the clinical trials. So, yeah. So it basically. Yeah, I, I, I don't I think the, the ready for brain surgery on a human is a bit of a hyperbole because it was kind of just announced as an off that. Oh, it works in a monkey already. Well, first it started with a mouse and then they, yeah. they're like, yeah, uh, what is it? Elon wanted to say, yeah, let's talk about the monkey in the room. And they said, yes, they have been actually testing this on primates. So that's a little scary. Yeah. A monkey um, was able to control a computer with its brain using this implant. So this is our brave new world. Yes. Yes. Ape has, ape has killed ape is all I can think of. I shall wait until this just, uh, just goes in a hat. I don't really want it in my brain. Directly. Yeah, there are other companies that are working on that one. So <laughs> there's two different there's two different sides to this. There's the companies that are trying to put it into your brain, and there are the companies that are trying to detect brain waves from outside of your brain. 
Yeah. So we're going to see how, how like it's a, it's a race right now. I'm guessing yep. the ones that go inside your brain are probably going to be better than the ones that are outside your brain. One would imagine, but uh, I'll take my chances on having a slightly inferior product at the moment. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know, you can you can always take off the hat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a, but it's pretty interesting technology that they're developing with these uh, new robots and the filaments that they're putting into the brains. Wait, there's auto update on this thing. Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Ransomware. You need <laughs> send me three Bitcoin so you can pee in the morning <laughs> or I won't let you use your hands. <laughs> oh, oh, that's scary. That's scary. Yep, a little but, bit. <laughs> uh, we'll see how this goes but the first one is supposed to be just a couple holes like four eight millimeter holes eight millimeters is still pretty big if you want them drilled in your head but hey man here's the deal if you're paralyzed and you got no other options and you want to try it i'm all in for it yep. yeah if you <laughs> seriously if i was on the other end of this testing and i'm like you know stuck in a chair and i can't do anything sign me up honestly yep. sign me up i so will i don't see don't i don't yeah, I don't really see like testing this on, you know, healthy humans who have nothing to lose. Uh, yeah, I, why not? Give it a shot. Yep. I'm down as long as as long as everybody goes into this with eyes wide open. Let's get started. Yes. Well, Congress wants to try to solve deep fakes by 2020. Oh, God. Because the fear is that deep fakes will disrupt the 2020 presidential election. So what's next? Banning special effects in movies? Because it's the <laughs> same exact thing. No more golems. It, it kind <laughs> you know? of is. It kind of is. Uh, I understand that. I mean, the deep fakes are definitely a problem. We've talked about that at great length in our security segment, that there needs to be some sort of legislation about it. But just banning things outright is not the, re- the answer. It's not the response. And it never works. And it doesn't, as this article talks about, it doesn't get down to the much larger problem, which is disinformation in general. This is just a form of disinformation. There was plenty enough before deep fakes existed. Right. And we have laws on the books to actually cover a lot of these things. Some of Mm -hmm. them have lapsed and they're going to be reintroduced. But these like haphazard laws that they're trying to push through are just terrible. No sense. They are terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, This is just knee jerk reactionism by people Mm -hmm. who don't understand the technology. Yep. A.K.A. Congress. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And this one makes me very, very, very amused. I got this from about 150,000 different people. (laughs) Apple plans to bankroll original podcasts to fend off rivals. We're and here, Apple. Exa- yeah, that We're was here. the question. Just Everybody's waiting. like, would you do this? And I'm like, hell yes. Duh. <laughs> I'd do it with Spotify. I'd do it with Lumen. Hey, hey, look, anybody wants to give me money to do what we do here, roll out the wheelbarrows, baby. I'm all in. But yep. we're not going to be part of Apple because, uh, you know, Apple, they're squeaky clean. And we're not. We could do clean shows. We could do clean shows. We could totally do clean shows. For the right we amount could. of money, we can definitely do the, clean shows. <laughs> for the right amount of money, I'll wear a goddamn Barney suit. <laughs> All right? I don't care. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about this is, does this mean that Apple is actually going to finally start to pay attention to the podcasting uh, library that they have and, and make some changes there? It seems like it with splitting out podcasts into its own app on the desktop means Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's going to be kind of like a Spotify client. I'm hoping, figuring that uh, whatever. I haven't seen it in in the wild yet or in person. Mm -hmm. So because I'm not about to install a beta anymore. (laughs) I'm I'm past that. You know, finally, I'm (laughs) finally post beta. I don't have to do that anymore. Although I I miss when your uh, entire system shut down for weeks at a time. I kind of do, too. It was fun. And it gave me an excuse not to reply to people. I'm like, phone bricked. Sorry. (laughs) You know, (laughs) emoji shrug. That's all I can do. I do want this new iPad OS, though. This thing is looking sexy. Yeah, it does. It looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, But back to the story. Mm -hmm. It's funny that Spotify stock dropped on this news. And it's not even news. It's just speculation from just a few rumblings behind the, the, the white curtain of Apple. Right. Well, you know, Spotify is investing heavily in podcasting, thinking, you know, they've, they've discovered that the music model isn't really enough for them and they need some more growth. And uh, to have the uh, the big the big elephant in the room go, well, we're going to do it, too. That that does make some sense that the, their stock would take a hit. Yeah, because, I mean, all Apple has been doing is watching podcasts grow and watch yep. their market share shrink. Yep. They're like they, they ignored it for far too long, but they still don't have like that many people. There's just over. There's nobody driving the ship. 
just that's looking, the thing. Well, that was yeah. my point is if they're going to make this invest, investment, does that mean they're going to start to take podcasts and, and their whole system more seriously and have some people run it? Also, yeah. Apple, if you don't want to pay for our podcast in and of itself, you could hire Jason and I to run the division for you. We know what we're I doing. Would, yeah, the dogs <laughs> would love to move to Cupertino, you know, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> although Bam Bam would probably like smash through a lot of those glass walls in the donut. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't think <laughs> you'd be allowed do? to bring their dogs to work. It's, dude, it's San Francisco. That's mm. part of the package. All right. I'm working from home then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And of course... A very interesting article came out in the New York Times yesterday called Have We Hit Peak Podcast? And as Betteridge's law of headlines would say, no. Uh, this this article I find hilarious because, well, my, you know, one of my clients, Jordan Harbinger, is in it talking mm-hmm. about, no, don't start a new podcast. And there's a woman at the top of the article mm-hmm. in a, a fine photo of her with her headphones on with the microphone. Mm-hmm. And I would like to point out the microphone doesn't have a shock mount, so she should get her elbows off the table, you damn dirty ape, because that's <laughs> not how you podcast. Uh, anyway, and well, obviously she doesn't know anything because her podcast lasted six episodes. They did it on an iPhone 5 from a library. And the whole beginning of this article is, and, and I have not figured out why they led with this, a, a woman who didn't give a shit about podcasting, tried for six episodes and threw it away. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's almost everybody on the planet that picks up podcasting for the first time. <laughs> How does this have to do with peak podcasting? It, it And it was years ago. I don't quite understand how this article came together. This woman but, also doesn't care enough to update her own Twitter profile, which still says that her podcast is coming soon. Uh, well, no, she has a new one coming oh, soon. Oh, she's trying again. She's gotcha. trying again. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, the new one will be sex advice even though her last one was an advice column. And she said, we didn't really know anything because she's in her early 20s. I'm like, duh, you're about as smart as a stone in your early 20s. What advice do you have to give me? Well, she's uh, to, to be fair to her, she's doing exactly what we did in our early 20s. We just struck out and did things. So let's That's not true. automatically crap on them. She doesn't have, she, we didn't have the ability to give people advice about what we were doing because we were just throwing shit against the wall to see what would stick. But good on her for trying. Yes. And that's exactly my next point was she is getting completely bashed in her Twitter comments. And I actually made a reply in her Twitter comments, which I think got me shadow banned because I got zero replies on it because I use a lot of F-bombs and very well, nasty language. Shocking. Yeah. If only you were like, president of the United States, that would have been totally acceptable. It would have been. <laughs> it would have been. So I ended up deleting it. But I'm like, what the fuck have you guys done? At least she tried. You know, right. she's going to try again. I'm not going to fault anybody for trying. That's hmm. honestly, I fault her for keep, keeping her damn elbows on the table when she doesn't have a shock mount. But if she's going to try, just keep on trying until it works. You know, look, I got it, we've all got projects that failed, but you got to start somewhere. So the crapping on her for that, I thought was really shitty from the people on Twitter. But it is Twitter. So it's you Twitter. Get, so <laughs> you get and comes comes with the territory. Yeah. Yeah. And I love some of the comments though. they are pretty funny. It's like white privilege, not just for males anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's but true. It, 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 the, the problem I had with the article was just, you know, it's like, look, we're not at peak podcast. Everybody who wants to start a podcast should try it. They might love it. It, it takes a lot more work than you think it does, though. <laughs> it does. It takes a lot more work. And to be honest, it, it does seem overwhelming. But if Apple had somebody, say, running the board over there that called all the podcasts that are no longer active, you wouldn't see quite so many podcasts to scroll through. Yeah, exactly. There's seven. There's over they 700,000. Should break it, they should it. break it into archived and live. That's one yeah. of the first things that they need to do over there. Yeah, cause, I mean, there are some <laughs> older shows that are evergreen, like the History mm-hmm. of Rome podcast. That thing yep. should stay up forever because it is a self-contained unit. But anybody who does like a talk show, like if we stopped rec- recording and posting for like yep. three months, pull us from the damn list. Yeah. Or put us you know? in an archived area. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I want to be able to search through things that have been updated in the past two weeks. That's it. That's all I want to see up there. But there's nobody home. There is no one home. Well, that's going to have cha- that's going to change, obviously, if they invest. So once again, Apple, either way, whatever way you want to give us money, we'll take it. We'll help you run it or you can just take our podcast. Please. Exactly. And just to just to put a bow on the, the peak podcasting thing, if you're thinking of starting a podcast, by all means, give it a shot. I'm not going to tell you not to. If you think you're going to do it and make money, think you're again. Not. Think again. You got to do it because you want to do it for fun and that in experimenting and learning and being part of the community. 
that's all well and good. But if you're coming into this thinking that you are going to make money in this market right now with every carpet bagger and schmo out there trying to make a buck, you are not going to make a dime. So just get that out of your head. But if you want to do it for fun, have 20 of your friends listen to your show, fucking go for it, man. All Wait, more power to you. That's all we're... Why am I here? All right. <laughs> good show. Nice talking to you, Jason. Hey, come on, come on. We have we have 10,000 close friends that listen to us. <laughs> All right, we got some Netflix news. The court, the second quarter report has uh, come out, and uh, the number that jumps out is that the service grew by 2.7 million subscribers. Okay. Which is a problem, apparently, because the company predicted it would be up by about 5 million. So again, this is shareholder value and uh, the need to continue growth at reckless paces and unsustainable paces coming to light because, you know, 2.7 million subscribers is quite a lot and they're making a lot of money still. Yeah, I, d- yeah. Well, it, so I think what they have to do is just dial back some of that new content that they've been putting out and the numbers will balance out. Well, we will get to that because they're actually going to have to dial that up. I'll just go ahead and start melding these two stories together. Okay, roll um, on into the next one. <laughs> well, the, the one of the main reasons that the, their numbers will probably go up again is obviously this didn't include Stranger Things, and a lot of people are smart enough to unsubscribe to services if they're not going to use it for a few months, then resubscribe when they're going to use it again, because why wouldn't you? That's mm-hmm. what a lot of people are doing with CBS All Access for Star Trek, yep. and uh, there you go. So that's happening with Netflix right now. But Netflix is saying that, no, this is not because of the competition which is coming because Disney Plus hasn't launched, Apple TV Plus hasn't launched, HBO Max hasn't launched, NBCU hasn't launched, and uh, the big... uh, So that's not why they've lost numbers. Again, I think we just kind of solved that. It's because people unsubscribed because nothing big was on it at the moment. Uh, The next article I saw, which is the... Once again, this is exactly what we said six years ago, but now The Atlantic (laughs) is writing about it. (laughs) Oh, so now it's real. Now it's real because The Atlantic did it, even though we covered it first. Uh Yes, the Wild West era of streaming TV is ending. So what we're discovering is that uh, everybody had it good for a little while. Between, If you basically subscribe to Netflix, and they say Hulu, but I again, the only thing on Hulu that I... Well, I guess everybody likes that. uh, There's the one show that I can't watch. Oh, yeah, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale. So a lot of people are are getting that. So between Netflix and Hulu, subscribers could watch most fun first run movies and TV episodes on the computer for less than 20 bucks a month. Throw in HBO so you get your Game of Thrones at $15 more and you basically had the complete package and were able to stay up with popular culture. However, as we've been saying all along, this is about to splinter greatly. Mm-hmm. Yep. And everybody's pulling their shows into their own little silos and starting their own launching media services, which will nickel and dime you to the point where it's going to cost more than it was for cable in the first place. Yep, that's That's the world that we've headed towards. That's what I've been screaming about all fucking six years of this show. And we're there now. Starting next year, we are there. If you want to keep up with everything, you're going to have to subscribe to five to six different services. Or you could have just kept your cable the whole time along. I knew cord cutting wasn't going to work out. So (laughs) you know what it's going to make people do again? Back to Torrance. Go back to Torrance, but also I'm wondering, I've just I've been thinking about this. Is this going to, is this like the herald of the end of the movie theater? Because it's almost these- gone. Yeah. I mean, look at yeah. the, look at, look at the money coming in for theaters now. Unless, I mean, it's why, it's why, it's why studios are only investing in superhero movies. It's the only thing that gets people into theaters anymore. Right. But you look at like, look at what an Avengers cost to make, you know, a couple Mm -hmm. hundred million dollars. Imagine how many bingeable series that you could put on your streaming service for that exact amount of money that would engage people much longer than that two and a half hours, you know? And it just seems like if they're going to all have their own silos, they're going to all have to be putting all of this money into that content. And why would you work on these big tentpole movies when you can just nickel and dime everybody for 10 bucks a month? And That's a movie ticket right there for one person in your household. You know, I I think that, you know, like maybe five, six years down the line, mark this, mark this in your calendar because this will be in the Atlantic <laughs> in five or six years, the death of the theater. Uh, I think all of these streaming services are just going to be subsumed with series. Yeah. Well, I mean, and if they if they do it right, I, I much prefer to watch Jessica Jones than another goddamn Avengers movie. Oh, but absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So there you go. We predicted it. Now it's happening again. Mm-hmm. Again. Security. Ha! 
We are not back this week with Dave Bittner from the CyberWire podcast. The CyberWire is a free community-driven cybersecurity news service based in Maryland. Dave is also co-host of the Hacking Humans podcast, along with Joe Kerrigan, where they take on social engineering. So, Dave, why are you not here this week? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> now, Dave, uh, Dave was a little busy this week and a little overwhelmed, so he has taken a, taken a bow out for this segment this time, but he will be back next week. He has taken a personal day. Well, mm-hmm. I have some follow-up to Dave's story about his egos last week. Right. And uh, his tracking app. I don't it's not specifically about his follow up because I'm not him and I don't know what his follow up is going to be. But this is my follow up after I listen to the ego story. So, you know, I'm not on Facebook anymore, right? I do know that. Yes. So I got a bunch of new domes from Mm -hmm. the lovely people at domes and I was Googling at Marpac dome at Marpac. Yes. Uh, The domes from Marpac. Yes. So I was Googling dome and Marpac to figure out which, what they sent me and what the different things were so we can deal with that. But uh, I'd given my old one to my roommate and then she started complaining. They're totally listening to us. They're following us, man. <laughs> On my Facebook page, all I'm getting are ads for that damn thing. And I've never Googled it in my life. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, OK, I got you. I just, ah, ha, ha. And then I got a bunch of Brook Linen stuff mm-hmm. from the the sheet company mm-hmm. and She's then I showed them to her and I'm like, look, I got new Brooklyn and sheets. And she's like, cool, cool. Next day on Facebook, here's our Brooklyn and ads. <laughs> so it, it's, it's very simple. It's very basic. We live in the same house. We have the same IP address that's yep. outward facing. Yep. Retargeting just if they can't find a, a specific vector, they're still going to look at the IP address that it came from, even though they can't fingerprint the same browser. Yep. If you're in the same house. Same you can IP, still get same ads. interests. Yes. So, like, let, let's take let's take this for an example. Brian, you and I are talking over dinner. We're talking about going to Guatemala. Okay. And before we had this conversation, I'd looked up Guatemala. Yes. You know, to see what the what the GDP is and what the climate is and blah blah blah. And mm-hmm. I forgot about it. I was just it. So it's in the back of my head. Yeah. So then and we I, I just about I just quickly looked at the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And then you go and look at Facebook later on, and mm-hmm. lo and behold, there are ads for Guatemala. And then you suddenly think that, holy shit, my phone's listening to me. Okay, yeah. problem solved. Your phone's not listening to you. Moving along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly part of what uh, Dave is theoretically doing. He, uh, he's he been informed he's not allowed to Google any food whatsoever to see if it's just his app that's leaking the data. So Yes, yeah. Yes, he's trying to do he's doing a semi scientific study, <laughs> except <laughs> except he's actually buying those groceries using his rewards card at the grocery store, which is being tied is in and tied into up by his Facebook. other shadow yes. profiles. Yes. And yes. it all comes back together. Comes so back. also, I just want to point out that Marpac and Dome did a huge advertising push for Prime Day because they had a big sale there. So those ads were being uh, pushed out everywhere. Oh, interesting. Interesting. But Brooklinen probably did not. And she no. got Brooklinen ads, too. Yeah. All within, so the, the, same, all within multiple the same 24 vectors. hours of me searching. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. Multiple vectors, all which do not involve your phone listening to you. Yeah. And, you know, there's an easy way to test it. You find something random, some product that you know people advertise for on the Internet. And just and start talking about it. Start One one computer starts talking about it that's not on a, a computer that has a Facebook account. And watch what the ads show up on the other computer in the house. Very, yep. very simple. But mm-hmm. that doesn't mean your phone's listening to you, people. I just we have to keep <laughs> story that, that won't horse. Die. That yeah, that horse is just from Reanimator because it pops up every damn week. Now, I particularly enjoyed this story. <clears throat> Police in Bulgaria announced the arrest of a 20 year old computer programmer on Wednesday. His crime? He orchestrated a staggering hack of the entire country's national tax authority that uh, got all kinds of data, including names, addresses, job titles, incomes, health insurance specifics, loan details, and social security information of nearly every adult citizen in the country. Or, nice. as the article title says, the hacker just stole the personal financial data of an entire country. Well done, sir. Yes. To make matters worse, the hack apparently had gone totally undetected until an email claiming responsibility was sent to media outlets in the country earlier this week from a Russian email address. The state of your cybersecurity is a parody, the hacker taunted in the email. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. Well, enjoy that Bulgarian prison, you moron. (laughs) Yes, he will. He will be in prison. Now, this data could have been worth as much as $200 million on the black market, and he might have gotten away with it. You kids might have gotten, I've got my for one for your damn kids. Uh, they, kids. He, he might have gotten away with it if he wouldn't have sent the taunting email. So, exactly. Yes. This is what happens when you're 20 years old. You're stupid. Yes. 
Yes. So basically their entire system was always... Bulgaria has been known for having a horrific cybersecurity situation. So there was a, the president said he was a wizard, but uh, the prime minister, <laughs> sorry, said he was a wizard, but all cybersecurity experts said, eh, probably wasn't that difficult to get in. Yeah. A little <laughs> sequel injection, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, face app. <laughs> oh, you dastardly little whippersnapper, you. I, I got to see that you got to pull out your favorite phrase when uh, when this was brought up during the week. The tempest in the teapot. Yes, this is a <laughs> tempest in the teapot. Well, it starts off with Senator Chuck Schumer asking the FBI and the FTC to look into FaceApp. Okay. Again, this is not new. FaceApp has been around since 2017. Yes, it this just went all viral. Before. It went viral this week. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it, it went viral before. This has all happened before. It will all happen again. I get to mm-hmm. bust that one out, too. It has been a long time since we used that one on the show. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, my God. This is just, it's maddening. It's maddening that these people think that this is such a, a, a horrible thing that people have a terms of service that says, hey, if you upload something to us, you're giving us the rights to it in perpetuity. Well, it's free. As, How do you expect them to make money? Well, here's the, it's not even that it's, it's, this is lawyers not knowing, well, actually it's lawyers knowing the technical limitations of the system, because what happens is you upload it to their server. It gets into a backup. That backup is stored somewhere within the company. The company then sells to somebody else, right? Yep. So once that data is transferred to another company, you have to have the license to the data that's even just in a backup somewhere Otherwise, you're open to liability. So Mm -hmm. you have to say things like this. This is the reason this type of language exists. It's the (laughs) technological side of things. It's not that they're going to take your photo, which quite frankly sucks and means nothing, and monetize it. It just doesn't happen that way. That's not the way it works. Well, there was a a couple subscription. That's what they they want your subscription. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Grumpy. You're turned into your photo. I, I have. I have. I did it just to piss people off that were like, oh, my God, they're going to steal your data. I'm like, here, no, this is what I gonna... think of it. Look, <laughs> I, I think it's good that that, again, any time the discussion is being had about privacy and privacy rights and what these apps are doing and what is happening, any time that hits the mainstream and that part goes viral, I'm happy because it makes people aware. Because all of a sudden now people were, let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All of a sudden people were all of a sudden concerned again about potential privacy and how these apps work and then it was brought up that you know no most apps don't do it in the cloud most apps that that work on images it stays it uses your own phone's computing power it doesn't send it out to the cloud this one does was it uh, was it made very obvious that they do that no should they yeah probably you know the, the discussion was being had and i think that's a good thing because most people just blindly ignore all this stuff so now all of a sudden people are discussing how these things happen now <laughs> are we concerned about fucking putin taking all of our faces and doing something no of course not and the the crazy people that were saying oh they they get access to your entire photo roll and they get every photo that you have on there it's they, they grabbed everything and that's been proven to be false that doesn't happen it's only the photo that you upload it's no big deal it is what it is calm the fuck down everybody but again i am happy that the discussion is being had well, see, the the discussion should have been had before it went to mainstream media because but now that's not how the, humans work. I know, but the problem is the story of them taking everything in your photo roll is out there, and people will forget the other part that says no, they don't, and then it's just it makes dumb people dumber, and that's yes. the only problem I have with it is it makes Ooh. dumb people dumber because they hear one story, they don't follow up with it, and that's the story that they're going to remember forever. Ever. Okay, I agree with you on that. But the, and we have a couple more links to the show notes as well. Uh, Face apps response on TechCrunch, which wasn't the best. They definitely could have used some PR people that did not help issues. Uh, the Washington Post has a, a good breakdown of exactly what happens to your privacy if you download Face app. Uh, nothing. 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 <laughs> uh, but the one thing that I do wish that everybody would be addressing in these articles, and, and we'll do it here first again. You know what's way worse than Face app for your privacy? Facebook, Facebook, (laughs) Instagram, (laughs) a thousand times worse. Face app all fucking day. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Drive yourself nuts. If you're using Facebook and Instagram, you have no right to be pissed off about this. Yeah, absolutely. There you you go. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. 
But yep. uh, just to blame this on the Russians. Oh, yeah. Face dawn is coming. Uh-oh. You know, you know what Russians have actually used to harm us? Facebook. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have, we, it's, it, that we know for a fact. <laughs> we know that they did that. Face app? No. Not so much. God, <sighs> moving along. Okay, moving along. Researchers from Boston University detected a vulnerability in several high-profile Bluetooth devices that could allow third parties to determine your location and other sensitive information. And in other shocking news again, this falls under, wow, technology without security doesn't work so very well, does it? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> this is, it is, you know, it is what it is. It, it, the technical aspect of it, it, it basically involves pairing and unique IP addresses and some, some you know, sometimes you, you need a little bit of security in there. Sometimes people don't put it in. Uh, it doesn't leak personal data, but it could be used to track Bluetooth devices and their users. I put this story in here for our, I can't remember our listener's name right now, the Android lover, because oh, Android's yes. got a pass here. The researchers say Android devices don't appear to be vulnerable, but Windows 10 and iOS devices can be tracked and Fitbits are the worst. See that, that it, I found this originally on 9 to 5 Mac and I was p- going to put it in here before I saw you already had it because it says Bluetooth flaw allows iPhones, iPads, Macs, Apple Watch and more to be tracked. But they started with all of the Apple stuff because they it's an, obviously an Apple site. So they think, oh, my God, it's just out. And then you keep reading it. It's like, oh, shit, there's a bunch of other things that are open to this. This is not a flaw in Apple. This is a flaw in the Bluetooth protocol. Yep. So why are you even calling out any actual products? I don't know. Anyway, it's, yeah, it comes down to the, they were trying to do the right thing, but they did it poorly. Right. So there, there are, you know, fixes in the works for it, but it's, uh, yeah. It, and, and it doesn't really matter if you like leave the area because it's Bluetooth low energy. Yeah. So if exactly. you're wandering around a mall, they can track you and things like that. Or you could just basically I let, turn it off and turn it back on again. <laughs> And you get a new you get a new Mac address. Yes. One so, of my favorite uh, tech solutions of all times. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Yeah. Yeah. Can we do that with the world? But I'm please? sure they will update Bluetooth soon enough because now they're aware of it, which is a good uh-huh. thing. Yep. And it, are, are there even any exploits in the wild that actually have anything that are meaningful with this? No. I'm sure the Israelis are working on it. Oh, Jesus Christ. The fucking Israelis. Ups and doodads. Brian, I actually left the house and took a trip last week. I know. I was shocked. I went to San Diego and uh, (laughs) it's only a 24 hour trip, but I did have to stay overnight and it was Pride weekend in San Diego. So I figured, oh, my God, it's going to be loud and (laughs) raucous and crazy. (laughs) It wasn't actually. (laughs) No, where I was at wasn't that bad. (laughs) I stayed at the Lafayette, which is a beautiful little hotel. Uh, a little dirty, but not bad. But I took my uh, dome travel. That was a slap and a kiss. Yeah, kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> I took the little dome travel uh, gadget that they sent us. And yeah, it's nice, isn't it, dude? That thing was fantastic. Yeah, I slept great. like a baby. I could not hear anything. I couldn't hear the noise in the hall, and I know there was a lot because I came out in the morning. There were bottles of vodka strewn around, <laughs> and beer cans. Somebody had a party, but I didn't hear a thing. Highly recommend this thing. We got to put a link in the show notes for that. It was really, really good. Excellent. I'm not big on Prime Day um, because, you know, <laughs> I'm mad at Hallmark holidays, much less a, a straight up consumerism buy our crap made up holiday. Prime uh-huh. Day. What yeah. a joke. But I couldn't help but like see a bunch of articles. And, and I can't remember where I found it, but it was like the top tech buys for Prime Day with the best discounts. And uh, I, I ended up buying a Samsung T5 portable SSD, one terabyte USB 3.1 external SSD MUPA 1T0B <laughs> slash AM black because uh-huh. it was like, uh, it was, I think it's 169 right now. It was like 50 bucks off on Prime Day. So it was super oh, cheap. Damn. Yeah, okay. it was really cheap. And this thing is awesome. It okay, is cause... tiny. I needed a new travel drive, basically, because I'm still hauling around an old Western digital that is like five times this size and five times the weight. Mm-hmm. This is great. I installed it really quickly. It is fast. It is so mm-hmm. fast. It is so light. And it's SSD. So, you know, no moving parts. Very nice. Well, well, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, you got the 50 bucks off, which is really key, because right next to it in the comparison uh, matrix at the bottom is the SanDisk one terabyte extreme portable external SSD, USB-C, USB 3.1, blah, 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 mm-hmm. for the same price. That's what I have. That's the right. one I got the other week, yeah. which is also tiny and sitting here on my desk. But mine's extreme. Uh, well mine is, was 50 bucks off i know i think i would rather have 50 bucks off uh, but uh probably about the same size looks like it 
Uh, no, yours is actually much bigger than mine. Uh, okay. no, maybe not. Well, I don't it's know. pretty damn small. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty damn small. It's a one terabyte SSD drive. But uh, for 169 bucks, uh, even even at full price, I got to say my SanDisk has been one of the best buys I've gotten in a long time. So I'm guessing yours is as well. Yeah, I, I love it so far, and I'm you know about to travel, so I moved everything from my larger drive right into this one, and and it's just it's great so far, and it is mm-hmm. blazing fast. It's really nice. Yes. Uh, the so other thing, one point six ounces. Mine's one point four. So okay. I saved wow, that point two, ounce. two ounces. It's going to break my back. Hey, man, when I'm running a tough mutter going up a mountain and I got my sadistic extreme in my backpack, that point two ounces might be, uh, you know, the, the difference between last place and second to last place. Well, mine's a little bit bigger, so more bullet coverage. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I picked up was a, one of the new Fire TV sticks uh, with an Alexa voice remote streaming media player because the one that I, I've discovered. OK, so I have Apple TV up on our main tv out in the living room but we also have a tv in our bedroom because happy life two tvs two bathrooms that's the way it works Mm uh but uh i didn't want to the old i have a very old apple tv back here which is so slow i don't even Mm -hmm. i'm it's just unusable anymore and i didn't want to spend like two three hundred bucks for another apple tv back here and i picked up a fire tv stick a long time ago it does everything it does everything i needed to do the same as apple tv uh, you know, particularly like we, the, the kid likes to come after he takes a bath, and come back in the bed and lay in the bed with with his mom and uh, watch some Daniel Tiger, all of which you can get. You can get Netflix, you can get all that sort of stuff. The only thing on my on the old Fire TV stick that we couldn't do was turn the TV on or off or volume. That was uh-huh. not built into the first round. These have it. It was 14 bucks on Prime Day. No. Brainer. Oh, man. <laughs> No so brainer. now we have volume control and can turn things on and off back here. So it is perfect. So it was just cheap and wonderful. Yeah, it's thirty four ninety nine now. I, Fourteen uh, bucks. Yeah, I, I don't need one, but I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like it's I, fourteen got, bucks. <laughs> yeah, fourteen bucks. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. That's like shipping on something. It's like shipping on the Roku's that I bought. <laughs> so no, not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, because I've got uh, a Roku TV and I got a Roku. St- Stick in my roommate's bedroom. I've got an Apple TV, another Roku, and an Xbox One in my bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah too many of these things. Um, the only thing that I don't know if this thing can do is, can you access like a media center? Like I've got a Synology set up as a streaming media player on my you, network. Uh, do you know if you, you can, can do if that? you can, you can sideload some stuff. Okay, to yeah, take care I don't want to yeah. run like Plex or anything like that on it. Right, but. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, hey, man, good deals. Yeah, it was a good deal. Very impressed. Yeah. Now, I've, I have, this just makes me sad. In the past, I have recommended Airmail for Mac and iOS. Uh huh. And loved them. Loved them Mm -hmm. to death. Well, yes. Airmail, they, they stepped on their dick this week and they switched over to subscription based pricing for, to basically get multiple accounts and uh, notifications on your iOS device. Mm -hmm. Well, they're saying that if you are, you can be grandfathered in for the multiple accounts, but you can't get push notifications. You still have to subscribe and pay for that because for some unknown reason, they're not using the built-in push notifications that Apple gives you on a platter for free. They've got their own infrastructure for it. Right. And it's costing them too much money to do all these push notifications. I'm like, well, maybe why don't you fucking re-engineer and fix it <laughs> instead of spending all this money? But so, yes. We could get subscriptions out of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely not. Because everybody is just like, well, screw you guys. I'm going him. And uh, everybody went back to Spark, which is where everybody came from to go to <laughs> Airmail. And I got to say, Spark has grown up. It is so much better than it used to be. I installed it, got it running on all of my machines. Mm-hmm. And it's nice because you set a sync address. Like I do multiple accounts. I've got like five Gmail accounts. And mm-hmm. one address is your sync address. So once you get your one machine set up, You figure out which address is the sync address, and then that's the one that you log into on any of your other devices, your iPads, your iPhones, and all that. Once you log into that account, it pulls everything. All of the tokens, it's all there. That's all you have to do. You have to log in once, and if you're already logged in to Gmail or Google accounts on that machine, you don't even have to like put your username and password in. You just click the name, and boom, you're done. And, oh, yeah, no subscriptions unless you want their... They're enterprise stuff, which has team collaboration in it. Right. I don't need team collaboration because I'm not a team player. 
And so <laughs> and you have Slack. Is, yeah. And uh, I just got to say, thank you, Airmail, for going tits up like this, because Spark is so much more enjoyable to use. And even on the desktop version of Spark, their calendar integration is so good. I don't even have to use Fantastical anymore. It is that good. So I get to I get to get rid of one app. I don't have to pay for anything. And I'm back in the saddle. And, you know, I, it, if Spark said, hey, we're going to update in the future and it's going to cost you some money. I'd be like, well, thank you, Spark, for giving me a heads up that I don't wake up one morning and say, well, you, you give us money now. Because it feels like Airmail came to me at gunpoint and said, we're taking your money or you can't use the app. You know, it's like, OK, delete. You're not that well, important to me. Well, Jason, <laughs> there's another much beloved program on the show that just did the same damn thing to us. <laughs> well, to you. Well, one password. Yes, you can no longer use one password unless you go subscription, mm -hmm. which I will not do. So thank you, one password. It's been real. I will continue oh. to use version six until Apple rolls out their version of this and it's baked <laughs> into their OS and iOS, at which point I will say sayonara one password because I'm not paying a goddamn subscription fee for this. I'm just okay. not. It's being built into everything. Everybody's doing it. Apple's rolling out their own. Maybe this is just a last gasp, you know, cash grab or to try to keep people locked into their infrastructure. That's probably it more than anything else. Once you're paying that to whatever a month to keep your one password, you're probably not going to go ahead and switch over to Apple's solution. Uh, maybe that's the whole point behind it. Hey, you want to do a subscription model? Fine. You should have grandfathered us in that just like to purchase the thing for a paid upgrade. Would have happily paid that. Wouldn't have complained. I hate these subscription model shit. Screw you. I'm going home. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I'll see you later. See you later, alligator. <laughs> I'm sticking with it because I did the math on it and I used to upgrade every year and it still comes out to be a couple bucks cheaper to keep one password going with the subscription model than it was for the paid upgrades that yep. I would pay happily every year. So, And when Apple rolls out there is you're going to quit. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it's just as good. You got to, you know, the proof is in the pudding on that one. Apple doesn't really have the greatest track record for coming out with first gen software. Uh, you <laughs> okay, know, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Look, how long has reminders been around and they can't even clear a you know, clear an entry when I hit done. So and uh, I am trying to try Dashlane because I got a free coupon code for it because they're advertising on another show and it looks actually pretty nice. Problem mm. is I signed up with the coupon code. And they said, welcome to Dashlane. Please click here to, you know, sign in. And I clicked there to sign in and it said, can't find your email address. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. Hmm. You just sent me an email to this email address. <laughs> that doesn't bode well for my passwords. No, so, it does not. <laughs> no, I'm staying with one password for now. It gets a job done for me and it's not that expensive. But uh, I can see your frustration because it just happened to me. I would be a hypocrite yep. if I said I didn't. Yep. Brick a brick. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetle We've been hearing, <laughs> been hearing about a Beetlejuice 2 for years. There's a teaser trailer. I couldn't wait for Media Candy to talk about it because I love it. I'm so happy we're getting a number two. It looks great. Everybody's involved. Everybody's back. It's going to be phenomenal. Brian, I hate yes. bringing this up to you. Mm -hmm. That's not a real trailer. It's a fan made trailer. What? That is not real. Oh. That's, a, that's a fan made trailer really yeah it is well, that sucks it really does because when i watched it i'm like holy shit this looks awesome i can't wait for this and then i scroll down and like yep it's a fan made trailer and then you go to imdb it's not even in casting yet it's not i was wondering it, about that because i did a search on imdb and i was like yeah. oh, i guess they just haven't updated imdb yet this is how much i wanted it to be true you have dashed all my hopes and dreams jason uh, you got fan duped you got hmm. fan duped. I'm sorry, man. I thought you put this in here because you knew. I'm, I hate to. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I've been busy this week. I didn't have time to look into this. I know, and and you know, generally, the thing that you never want to do is read comments on YouTube. Oh yeah, I just, don't read them. Oh crap! Now I'm looking at them. Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> My bad, everybody. My bad. Happens <laughs> oh, to hey, the best of us. I highly recommend everybody check it out because it's, it's, it's a really a good really trailer. Good tra yeah, I want to see this movie. <laughs> Because the thing about it at the beginning, I'm like, this is kind of like really weird tone for Beetlejuice with the, the family at the beginning. And yeah. I'm like, this is interesting. I don't know where they're going with this. And then it flips over and I'm like, hmm, 
I don't know. It could be good, but yeah. Sorry, sorry, Brian. I'm so uh, sad much like now. ghosts, Beetlejuice Two <laughs> is not real. Mm. Uh, what is real, though, is uh, these new panoramas that NASA released for the 50th anniversary of the uh, the moon landing. Sure, it's real from a Burbank soundstage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> oh, God. If Beetlejuice 2 isn't real, neither is the moon landing. Damn it. Oh, deep, deep juice. Deep juice moon. <laughs> That's what we're calling this. Oh. oh, man. Well, if you if you go on the on the presumption that they are real, they are pretty beautiful. If you look at the high res versions of them, so. they are wonderful. I'm actually going to make one of these with my background on my uh, on my Mac. So, yeah, they're really, really nice. Highly, highly recommended you go check them out. That is a good idea, though. Maybe I'll grab them and make some backgrounds, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did see a video because I was in a space kick. Uh, these Crew Dragon parachute tests from SpaceX. They're testing out the new parachutes for the uh, the the capsule that's going to carry the people up to space and back. Mm-hmm. And they're just gorgeous. They're very fun to watch, like how they're doing the parachutes and, you know, different configurations and things like that. And uh, I tell you what, that's going to be what hell of a roller coaster being on that crew capsule. Cause you're like, <laughs> you're coming down and it's like, Oh, there's a parachute. Oh, where'd that parachute go? Ah, poof. There's another parachute. <laughs> oh, okay. We're slowing down. Boom. That parachute's gone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, the big ones open. It is gorgeous. It's a very fun video to watch. Nice. Yeah, that's. I just made made me happy to see you know space testing stuff that didn't go boom and blow up. Uh, and finally, this one uh, back to the old. Uh, you 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 wanted to stay in the Spice Girls bus. Yes, I did. Air, when they turned <laughs> it into an Airbnb, mm-hmm. this one I think I would love to do. They turned an Oscar Mayer Wienermobile into an Airbnb. <laughs> And it's uh, cheaper than the Spice Girls, too. It's only $136 a night. Yeah. yeah I go for and girls. Jason goes for hot dogs. Hey, watch it there. Uh, and it's in Chicago starting July 24th. And it's pretty funny. I bet this is one of the ones that I've taken pictures of that they, they've they transformed because there's only a few of them left. And Yeah, there's I used only to a couple take, left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to take pictures of parades in Chicago all the time. And I have many pictures of uh, said wiener mobiles because they were just everywhere. And also because when they came through, you wanted to go up because you got free uh, wiener gum. They would always <laughs> throw out hot dog gum and it was really good gum. So you'd always want to go get your uh, your Oscar Mayer gum. But uh, yeah, check Weed. it out. They did a pretty good job, I think, with the the inside of it. There's a few phrases I've heard that are more wrong than wiener gum. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was kind of wrong. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Closing shout out. I have to give a closing shout out to the bastards that made the Beetlejuice 2 fan trailer. <laughs> <laughs> How can I not? Son of a, I really want to see that movie. Can you do the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Hire these guys. Tim Burton, hire these guys. Tim Burton, just outsource guy. it. Outsource it. Just get yeah. it done. <laughs> and... Oh, Brian has been duped by deep juice. Sorry. Uh, oh Sorry, well. man. It's really well done. Maybe the Congress should get on this. This should be illegal. Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Toss us a buck a month and we'll love you forever. If you'd like to give a one-time or recurring donation, go to GOG.show and click the PayPal button in the sidebar. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 362. From there, you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, and get links to stuff we like. Stay juicy. Wiener gum.